All right, so uh, now this one, I don't get quite as far in the arm drag. So the way this progression is going to work, so it, the one we just, the first one we looked at, where we get the hip and kind of drag the hip into back mount, we're really close to finishing the arm drag, and we get a little bit of an obstacle in our way. This one, we're not quite as close, and the final one will be pretty far away. So I want you guys to kind of see kind of how the, the hierarchy of my decision making works here. So because they all they all work in very specific situations. If you use the wrong technique at the wrong point, if everything's just going to go to hell for you. So I want to make sure you understand that. Cool. So we're here. Arm drag again, coming up. I walk in here on the mat, I do my rocket ship, I come back. Now this time though, before I can start making any sort of angle, we start putting pressure into me here. So now at this point, it can be really difficult to start scooping my hips out because he's going to put a lot of pressure into me because he's trying to get this arm back across his body, right? So I can end up in a half guard position pretty quick. So I'm hanging on to this arm drag and I, I try for a second to try and scoot and he flattens me out. Now I want you to notice what's happening with, with my hook here. So instead of leaving this in, in like a half guard position, as soon as I recognize that my back is getting stuck flat to the mat, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of accepting that I'm not getting to the back, but I want to use this position as a way to, uh, way to get to someplace better before it turns bad for me. So what I'm going to do is I pull my bottom leg, one that's between his legs, up between us. The middle leg. Now, yeah, my, my middle leg. So now, so now I'm pulling it up to, it's going to be like a hook, okay? So this is going to turn into a butterfly hook. So it went from being a back hook, to a butterfly hook here. Now, as my as uh, as, as Matt drive, drives into me, I'm starting to scoot my hips flat and scoot my hips underneath the him. So as he's moving into me, so he's moving this way, I scoot underneath him here. So I, I basically shoot my hips under his body, so I can get a little bit of uh, a little bit of leverage, a little bit of control of his uh, his center of gravity here. My my uh, my free hand, I just grab his lat, get a good grip here. Now I'm going to pull this way. I keep this arm his arm drag grip here. Elevate. Follow him over here. Now, in this position, they can turn into a little bit of a scramble, but sometimes you can come up in here and you can set like a technical mount grip. And you just go back into your back control. That's kind of high in the sky. A lot of times, you'll end up just kind of scrambling in. So the key here is that arm drag. I'm taking away his post. So if you think of a classic butterfly sweep, I'm going to be here. I can get this wrist control. I'm taking away his ability to post to this side. If I don't control that wrist, I go to elevate. And he's going to post that all day. So the same thing's happening here where I have the arm drag. I'm just, I'm taking, it's just a different way of taking away that post. So when I go through the sweep, there's no way you can, uh, you can take that hand in the mat. <clears throat> so from the beginning, I'm up, come back. I start going to try to take his back. He starts coming in. So I pull this foot up, just keep my hips underneath, grab this lat muscle. Now it's, it's essential, absolutely essential that I keep this arm killed, okay? As soon as, that, as soon as that arm travels all the way across my body, I lose. Now there's kind of a, uh, I have a little bit of, um, I have a little bit of leeway because he can start getting it part way across. If I keep that, if I keep his elbows stuck here, as long as that wrist is still on the far side of my body, I'm okay. As soon as that hand gets through, I'm, that's what I've done. Yeah. So if I, if he starts coming across, he starts loading, that can actually help me with the sweep, but I start losing my time. And I come up over and get this sweep. So if I do that sweep, remember I'm scooting underneath of him. Getting this hook, trying to load all this weight up on this hook. And I can post here a little bit if I need to. But a lot of it is just kind of believing in this rotation here. Getting this grip, pulling him a little bit this way, keeping this controlled. Looking up over my shoulder, elevate, all that over. Make sense, everybody? I was telling Marshall, this is actually my number one sweep. I was saying it's like the simplest sweep. It's actually not something you can do on purpose, really. Like, you don't go out there like, yeah, I want to hit this sweep when something else fails. Because you want the first thing to work anyway. But um, the reason it's so good is me pushing into him isn't the ideal response, but it's a lot better than him taking my back. So I have to choose between two really bad things. And the less bad one is that I just get swept. So if I'm going to run him down like that, uh, it's because I cannot let him go behind me. So it's either like the worst thing ever could happen or something else bad. So the sweep becomes really easy when I have to just, oh yeah, sweep me instead of get my back, choke me, make me really lose. So, it's good that way. Are there any details you want to add? Uh, no, that's good. It's getting the hips under and kicking over. Um, the one thing that can help you not get stuck in butterfly guard is if you have the chance, or not butterfly, when you flip them and then your foot's between the legs, is if you can get the second hook back in here. Because then you're able to throw them further, and you'll not get, in my other way I was getting stuck like that, this way I can throw them and then just get it up on the side. Can you show that one more time? Yeah. It's just going to be if, 
you don't want to have the room. If I'm here and he's too close, I can't get that hook in, then I'll try to just get this knee up. So if I put this back in again, when I scoot under and sweep, I can kick him away. And then the trick is to keep here and then throw your chest on the top of the shoulder. I don't want him to scramble into me or away. So up on top, drag him down. But even without the hook being put in, that's the, I do this a bunch of gi more so. We'll be going for daily rear sweeps, spider guard sweeps, butterfly guard sweeps, and there's a big scramble, and then it just ends with this little, it's like, I call it a stupid sweep, because it's just, just knock them over. And uh, I remember I was watching my instructor, Eduardo, spar, and he had hurt something, his wrist or his ankle, and he was doing all his guards in the mirror that he normally would. He usually would grab this way, he would grab him this way. And so he wasn't used to his daily Riva guard on one side, and he kept getting this sweep instead because he would normally do something more intricate, and he couldn't because it wasn't on that side. So he's, we kept getting this because it's just one little hook, one little grip. It makes that noise. Good, yeah. Noise That's how you know it works. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think I make sound effects without knowing it all the time when I spar. But I was talking to one of the black ops from my gym who said he did a Hickson seminar. And Hickson would be doing the sparring, and he'd be going, uh, 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 uh. And he'd do that noise, and the uh was when he'd sweep somebody. And so my the black belt, his name's Crazy James, asked Hickson, Hickson, why do you make that noise? He's like, sometimes the sweep is good, but it needs a little uh to go all the way. So, I guess, know that that can help you out. Super it's, secret technique. Yeah. Watch, watch, edit, the little uh, 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 and then they sweep. You can't edit that out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, guys, let's try that. <laughs>